the Prophecy Brothers in color. Starring Brother Man. And Brother Champion. They are brothers. They are unorthodox. All right, welcome. Welcome to the Prophecy Brothers. I'm Brother Man, and this is Brother Champion. Welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. So it's just going to be us two. Uh, we don't have any guests on, and uh, we're going to talk about some things. So what do we want to talk about tonight, Brother Champion? All right. Okay, so it's, it's, we didn't have anything planned out other than uh, I knew that we need to film right away because uh, you know, the end time stuff is taking off real powerful, and uh, you know, it should be obvious to everybody who's watching. Uh, but, okay, you had some information uh, about the, uh, the hoax. That's what we were calling the, uh, this, uh, all this um, fake stuff that's going on. Right. And then uh, also you had some prophetic uh, dreams, I believe, or you know, warnings from, uh, from God, like the urgency of what's going on. It lines up with uh, some other uh, people have been having the prophetic dreams. Then also just, uh, okay, last couple shows, or last few shows, we had uh, Pastor Mark and uh, Pastor Zephaniah on. And, okay, I know that, you know, people would freak out because, uh, you know, we get real industrial strength when we're talking. And, uh, you know, people, you'll see that they're wearing the collars, but, you know, they're, uh, they're not Catholic priests. <laughs> they're, uh, uh, Protest those are Protestant minister collars. Uh, uh, Pastor Mark's... Uh, Pastor, that you know, their denomination—that's that's what they uh, they wore when they were doing uh, you know official church business like uh, marriages or, or burials. And Pastor Mark felt like uh, he, he just like to want to let uh, his people know that uh, he's doing official business here. And uh, okay, so that's what's going on with that. But I'm doing official Christmas business because it's December, so I wore a. Red sport coat and a green shirt this time, so I'm a little out of uniform. That's right. Oh yeah, because we're we're filming this is uh, December eighth, two thousand twenty. That's right. But okay, before we start, uh, okay, we better start off with prayer. Uh, God, Father in heaven, God, we come together here in, in Jesus' name. God, we ask you, God, to do all the talking for us, all the communicate for us. Only let us say, do or th think, or communicate what you want to say, do or think, or co communicate. Let the, the audience, uh, whoever's watching this, receive what you want them to receive from this, God. Uh, only let us receive what you want us to receive from you, God. Prepare us, God, for everything that's coming to us, everything that's coming to, to the world. And uh, let us complete every assignment, every mission you have for us, God. Let your will be done here with, uh, with this message here tonight, whatever you have for us to talk about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so, Champion, what did you want to ask me? Okay, so you had the uh, prophetic dream, or you had a few of them, but... Uh, Maybe this won't uh, be a long uh, explanation here, but uh, you, you had the, the dream where that immediately I, I felt like, because uh, I had some dreams similar, where you, you saw a bunch of uh, like warships or, or airplanes flying low, uh, if you could explain that. Yeah, you know, and I told you about it. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know if it's prophetic or not, but when I told you this, you were like, okay, well, I better tell about it. <laughs> but it's been it's been a few weeks now, so... I don't, um, you know how it is with a dream. Uh, it's even amazing that I remember it at this point because a lot of times you, you wake up and you forget them. But uh, anyway, we came out of the house and it wasn't, um, it wasn't uh, our house, it was some house, but Emily and I came out and there was just, the, the sky was full of planes and they were low flying and I mean high flying. I mean, it was, um, you know, basically 3D. I mean, there were just stacks and stacks of planes in rows. 
So it was rows and columns of planes, and they were going overhead, and I just knew something was going on. And I'm trying to think what movie this is from. It was like a, um, saw this either in Battlestar Galactica or Star Wars or something, where they just showed when people are evacuating and all the ships and, and planes are they're evacuating, all the spaceships are evacuating. It was something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, when I woke up, I was like, okay, I'll try to remember this to tell Brother Champion. But when, when, you, uh, when you saw that in a dream, you, did you feel like uh, like a, a presence or like some kind of feeling like oh, this is the big one? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I knew it was a big one because I was like, um, it's it's sort of like which I'm sure many of you are experiencing this year. Um, you, you're seeing all this and you're like, yep, yep, I knew it was coming. Here it is. It's finally here. And it was the same thing. I was like, okay, this is the big one. Here it is. It's it's here. It's all the plane. So it wasn't. Um, it wasn't like I was totally shocked, you know, sort of like 2020's been. I mean, yeah, we're all kind of shocked, but we knew something was coming. We didn't know exactly it was going to lay out this way, uh, but it, but it's here. Okay, so I just want to point out that, uh, uh, like, like in the book of Joel uh, and uh, and uh, the book of Acts, where Peter quotes uh, Joel, you know, talks about outpouring the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay, well, I, I guess I'll read it. All right, so we talk about dreams. You know, we talked about this before, where you know dreams are, uh, you know, spiritual dreams are, are biblical, and I believe, uh, you know, we have been in the the church age for about two thousand years, but now we're you know towards the end. But uh, okay, Peter is quoting from the uh, prophet Joel in Acts two, starting in verse sixteen. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, okay, God's uh, you know, pouring out His Spirit on, on, uh, on everybody. Okay, the old man will, will see dreams. Okay, so we got the gray hair, so you know, we're, we're having dreams. Uh, you know, but we got all these signs, you know, fire, vapor, smoke, uh, all kinds of stuff going, going around the world, uh, earthquakes. Wars, rumors of wars, like uh, Jesus talked about Matthew 24, chapter 24. But, you know, with all these warnings and all this, uh, you know, the, the main thing is, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, so God's given us these warnings. So we see it, and we, we know, all right, God, I know you're showing this to me. This stuff's coming to pass. So we're calling out on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us. And, uh, Okay, so I've had uh, you know the prophetic dreams where I've seen stuff come to pass. And we, when you uh, mentioned a dream about the uh, airplanes, you know, I, I recognize what well, yeah, that felt like. It was like real similar to the dreams I had, where it was like uh, dreams where I say, "Oh no, here, here comes a big one." Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so you saw like basically like a, an air force, like going in all like uh, low flying. Uh, like One Direction, and then uh, re recently, uh, like Perry Stone, I've been following him for a while. He, he, every once in a while, he has a prophetic dream, and he's had stuff that came to pass. So did uh, like Lester Summerall and Dimitri Dudeman. You know, so these are well-known guys, uh, you know, preachers that had the dreams, you know, from God that came to pass. And so recently, Perry Stone had a, had a dream where uh, it looked like he, in the dream, he was in California, and he was like. Uh, in, on a tour of like, you know, or somewhere that like uh, it was in somebody's, you know, big mansion or, or, you know, one of these big houses out there, like Hollywood area. And then all of a sudden there, he saw like uh, fires like around him, like the, you know, the outlying areas like were, were being, uh, on fire and then riots. And then the, all of a sudden people were running to the house. So the way he was explaining it was like, no, oh, no, here's a big one. So, yeah. so I mean, uh, basically you had a, oh no. <laughs> Yeah. There, there's the big one. I mean, we've seen all these things, you know, happen this year. Uh, you know, we, we can see that, you know, stuff's about ready to, 
you know, take off with uh, all this, uh, you know, election stuff where, you know, it's open, you know, election fraud, you know, you know, you know super obvious. Uh, you know, so that, you know, there may be you know some type of uh, you know civil war because of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it's already started. But yeah, uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about some of that, but. Um, but okay, your yeah. dream with the okay, let's uh, point out what the okay the, uh, the, the airplanes. Okay, so airplanes. Uh, okay, we talked about this book before, Bible-based dictionary. I recommend this one for uh, as dreams and symbols. Some of the dreams are just. Uh, you know, common dream symbols. So, okay, airplane. Okay, airplane, uh, you know, uh, flying low. They were kind of flying low. Uh, so, but you saw a whole bunch of airplanes. So a warplane is, uh, could be a call to intercessory ministry, things of present or spiritual warfare. So, uh, one one uh, one side of this would be like, uh, okay, it's a warning that we need to uh, have intercessory prayer. We need to start praying right now for you know for ourselves and whoever God has us to pray for our families, whoever. And then this also reminded me like when uh, Elijah they had a servant, and uh, they don't have that scripture right now with me, but uh, you know we could look this up um, where he had a servant or. There was a battle going on, and, and the, this you know the servant was afraid that you know they're going to be uh, you know wiped out. But uh, Elijah just you know asked God to you know open up his eyes, and he opened up his eyes, and he saw that they were surrounded by angels, and that God's angels far outnumbered uh, the enemy. Mm -hmm. So you know God's given us you know these these dreams, these warnings to you know tell us what time it is, you know the lateness of the hour, but it's also you know, he's calling us to intercede and to pray and that God has angels in, you know, on our behalf. But we we can't just say, okay, I'm laying down. You know, this looks like this is going to be the end of, uh, of uh, you know, the United States or, the, or, the, or you know, all the countries. The country, you know, the wor world's going to be, you know, taken over by this, uh, you know, Antichrist government, which, you know, it's coming. But you know, that doesn't mean that we're supposed to lay down. It means we're supposed to, you know, pray to hold these things back, pray for people to be saved. You know, so that we're, we're not wiped out. That we're, you know, God wants people to be, you know, to be saved before it's, before it's too late. So, right. We're supposed to be doing what we should have been doing anyway, and we keep doing it until He tells us not to do it anymore. We're supposed to occupy till right. Jesus comes back, whether uh, you know that means you know, you know, until we die, or or until you know He, he comes down for everybody, uh, you know, out of heaven. So right. that would be right. a, you know, day of Armageddon. So, right. But okay. I guess that was my point was, okay, these prophetic dreams, you've been having the prophetic dreams. A whole bunch of people have been having like this, uh, like the same, like warning, like, or hey, this is the big one. So, you know, but, uh, you know, but, but basically, you know, don't, uh, you know, like lay down and give up this, you know, this is time that we need to call in the, inter, you know, the intercessory prayer. And God has the angels, uh, you know, to, to assist us, you know, but we, we have to, you know, take up our cross daily, like Jesus said. Uh, you know, do do the things He commands us. You'll pray, intercede. Okay, but uh, back to you, man. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's been obviously a crazy year with uh, the hoax and and uh, the second hoax, which I guess is the uh, the election here. It's like a, yeah, the second tower of the. It was like a big night, the second nine eleven. Right. Uh, you know, the only thing that, that um, you know, I, I would say is a little different because um, we're talking about war. We're talking about uh, judgment, fire, attack, airplanes. Uh, in my opinion, we just have to be really pray for discernment and not uh, not jump to something, not not beat the war drums uh, when it comes to, uh, say, China and Venezuela. Um, because that's something that's something that they've been. Uh, and we may have mentioned this on the show before. You can look this up, but I, I think it was back in 2014. Joel Skalzen was talking back then about how the elites wanted to start a war with China, and their timetable was for 2020, 
and that they thought that they could actually s survive a war with China and start even a nuclear war. And so now we're seeing with this um, Dominion software and everything, I know Sidney Powell came out and said this has, uh, China has, this has ties to China and uh, so did Lynn Wood, the attorney uh, from Georgia. And, and I would only say, say this would be, um, we just have to be careful, um, it, you know, are we not saying necessarily that Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood would be manipulating this, but are they getting fed information uh, that, uh, you know, uh, to, to get everybody to beat the war drums for, for China. If you notice, they always lead up, there's always several years of this when they lead up to something. We, we saw this back with Iraq, uh, and we saw it with Saddam Hussein, and well, who's in Iraq and Libya. And uh, they'll build all this up in the public's mind, so when they finally do decide to make a move, the public's on board with it because we've been conditioned this whole time. And, and so that's what I'm just saying. We're going to be, there's going to be deceptions coming from all over the place. So, and we just have to pray for discernment is really what my point is oh, yeah. with this. Then, uh, okay, I recommend, uh, okay, I got the Kindle thing here. Uh, talk about the, uh, okay, a good book, because I was just going through this. Uh, Protection from Deception by uh, Derek Prince. I don't know if you read that one, but. Uh, I haven't read that one. Okay, either. I recommend that, because, well, you just go through uh, your Bible verses talking about, you know, Jesus said, don't, you know, let, let no man deceive you. You know, like we uh, you were talking about Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 24. You know, so mm -hmm. there, there'll be, uh, you know, deceptions that, you know, Jesus said, uh, even the, you know, even the, the some of the elite, you know, God's elect, uh, I mean, you know, God's elite, you know, the, the his uh, elect chosen people uh, could be deceived. So we know there's, you know, there's coming, you know, big delusions, uh, deceptions, but, you know, the devil's a liar. You know, he's, he's uh, you know, that's what he's good at. Mm -hmm. So the only way basically to, you know, be safe from the, these deceptions is, you know, get close with Jesus right now. That's why he's giving us these spiritual warnings, you know, shaking us up, you know, letting, letting us know that we've been focusing on like the, you know, all this, you know, news and all this other stuff and, you know, worrying about, you know, that type of stuff. Maybe we, we've been, uh, you know, neglecting our, you know, our, our uh, prayer closet time where Jesus said, you know, enter into your closet and, you know, and pray. So I, th I think that's the, the main, you know, warning that God has for us right now to focus on Him so we're not deceived. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because... Um, yeah, the focus is, and, and I think this is this has really weakened us. Uh, this has weakened the church because of the the focus on the presidency so much for the last. I would, I, you know, it may go back earlier than the '80s, but at least from what I can remember, um, somewhat with Reagan, but it it really I think started when George W. Bush that that the church and the Christians have focus so much on the presidency of who's the president um you know if it's if it's a democrat then it's it's bad and this is an antichrist character if it's a republican this is good this is somebody god sent that uh, we've the church has lost focus on everything and I, and i really do believe um you know i i agree with chuck baldwin on this point would would the church have shut down so easily if Hillary Clinton would have been involved, or would have been in the office saying uh, churches need to shut services down because of the spread of the virus, uh, but, but because so many people have come to just trust a Republican uh, and Trump even more, uh, we have to be careful with those things. And so, yeah, we need to focus on on uh, the basics and doing what God wants. Uh, and yet, we we have to be. You know, somewhat aware of what's going on too. I mean, we we have to be away from the world, but we have to know what's going on because if we don't, um, there again, we can get deceived and tricked easily. Um, uh, yeah, Bible talks about having a proper balance, so mm -hmm. you know we could get out of balance by just you know, focusing on uh, you know the news or mm -hmm. you know instead you know stop focusing on our you know prayer time or the, you know reading the Bible. Right. Well, let's let's go to. I mean. Um, you know, talking about that, I've kind of lost my train of thought here, but 
let's say focusing on what we need to do, you'll, you'll hear Christians, we need to get prayer back in school, we need to get the Bible back in school, and their strategy for that is just to get, get a president in, or we need, uh, abortion needs to be, um, we, we need to uh, criminalize abortion, therefore we need a Republican president who will put in the right Supreme Court justice in the case that something will go to the Supreme Court. So all this is, everything's getting bit pushed to Washington all the time and we're not focusing on uh, what, what needs to be done locally and what we can do. Uh, you know, how many Christians out there that may have the ability to uh, start a school at their church or, or focus on building their church schools or focus on homeschooling? I think we need to start taking some of this locally. We need to start acting locally and not push everything up to uh, a messiah type figure, uh, so to speak, in the president and hoping that that we get the right president is going to save us from everything. And so I'm seeing that uh, uh, really happening here. Um, and, you know, my whole thing is is just um, we need to throw mud on the wall. We need, obviously, we need to have the basics down to right relationship with God. We need to work on ourselves, get sent out. Um, and then we just need to do something. Um, you know, God, I think God expects us to do something, you know, not just, um, I don't think Christianity was supposed to be set up in monasteries where we're just all locked up in our houses. Uh, say churches, right. for example, you know, I was thinking this before we came over, there's going to be a point that churches, uh, pe that the house churches, people need to go back to the house churches. Right. 2020 wasn't the year for that. But the church is just voluntarily, oh, we're going to need to meet in houses. And so many pastors have just fallen for this, um, you know, this hoax. And, um, you know, now is not the time. I don't think now was the time to uh, uh, go back, go into the houses. The church should be out there, should be out there in the open. Well, yeah, like John, John MacArthur. Right, we right. We need to be like him because, uh, you know, basically... If we're not, then they're just gonna you know keep on going with their uh, you know takeover, mm -hmm. and uh, you know next is uh, you know throw everybody in the you know prison camp because uh, you know say because of the whole ex. Well, you know, and 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 maybe some of you agree with this. You might think I'm crazy, but I thought some of that was crazy. I would hear all that stuff through the years, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's weird. It could happen. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but it's possible. I don't really think it's going to happen. Now I wouldn't doubt it because of the, uh, I, I, I mean, you just look at this has gone on. We've let this go too long. Good people have let this go too long, this hoax, without doing something. Now what I mean by doing something? Well, don't comply with the masks. Um, you know, there, there's rare occasions where I have wore a mask. Um, I, I think the last show we did, I, I talked about that. I was on the airplane, we were on, on vacation with the kids, and you know, I was out of town, and so I thought, well, I better just do this because we just invested all this money. I'll, I'll go ahead and comply with the mask orders uh, when we were down in Tennessee and on the airplane. Um, and then when I had some health challenges, I, I know that if I don't, I'm not gonna get treated if I don't wear the mask, so I kinda have to give up on that, but I'm not wearing them to the grocery stores. I'm not wearing them to uh, to restaurants. And um, if they want me to, if they won't let me do business there, that's fine. I'll just go somewhere else. In fact, um, you, you know the story. A couple weeks ago, we went out to eat with uh, with one of our friends, and Emily went. And uh, so I had a, I wanted to buy a TV, and I was going to get it from Amazon. And I thought, no, you know. I know where all this is going. You know, Amazon is just really profited from this, and um, I want to keep physical stores open. Now, we don't have, I don't think there's really any local TV places anymore, TV stores. So I thought, well, at least a physical location, I'm going to get something from Best Buy. So long story short, I ordered it online, and, and uh, it was right next to the restaurant we were eating at. So afterwards, we went there. And I went in with my receipt, and the guy at the door didn't seem to have a problem with this, you know, that I didn't have a mask on. I says, hey, I bought this. Um, and I need to pick it up because we'll go up to the service desk. So I get in line, service desk. And I, I will say this, the only time, I've only been harassed a couple times for not wearing a mask. And it's, oh. been, it's been from women. 
Um, the yeah. guys usually don't don't care, although you had a different experience with a security or no, mom did with a security guard. Oh yeah, so yeah, same yeah. with me. It was like, uh, you know, basically, you know, different grocery stores. It was yeah, usually the, or drugstore. Yeah, yeah so the, the women say, oh, all right, I could be in power. Oh, look at all this power I got. <laughs> right, right, this might be a feminazi thing. So anyway, um, she's yelling at me, and uh, you know, and I was like, I'm just going to be honest with her. I'm like, I don't wear a mask. You need to get a mask. Where's your mask? I said, I don't have one. Well, you need to go over there and get one off the table. We got them there. And I said, I don't, I don't wear a mask. And she says, you need to wear a mask. And I said, I don't work here. I don't need to listen to you. I'm a customer. I'm here to get my TV. If you give me my TV, I'll leave. And then you don't have to worry about whether I wear a mask or not. So then she started yelling at me. Um, for not, I was standing too close to the person from me. So she knew she really couldn't get me on the mask. So she says I wasn't six feet apart. And I said, well, where's your tape measure? So I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't the best Christian in this because I just challenged her through it right back. And I'm like, well, get your tape measure out. But you know, basically, we're, we're being uh, Americans and they're, 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 they're like, you know, citing what the foreign takeover, right? the right. globalist takeover. So it's like they, they, they chose sides. Well, you know, and, and, and here's here's the here's the. Th but they don't have, they don't have to make you know make a big deal about it if they just they have a sign on, on the store because the lawyers they're afraid of lawyers. Well, right. I mean, yeah. we, we've got to stand up, you know. And I I, I try not to go out unless I'm ready to. I, I have to be prepared. I have to kind of have the energy to say, okay, if I go out and don't wear a mask, am I going to be prepared for um, the confrontation at that point? And so a lot of times they're just like. I don't feel like it today. I'm not going to go out to the store or go out somewhere. But um, we, we have to do this now because if we don't do it now, how are we going to do it when they, are we going to be able to stand up to the vaccine, when they mandatory vaccine? So we've let them get away with this, kind of what I'm saying is we've let this go so far that people just, you know, we, we were sold, and I believe this was a psyop too, this is all about the election. Election's over now. And we still have these, you know, it, it, here we are in winter again, and everybody's going uh, full-blown retard again with this stuff. So, you know, so, so many people just like, oh, you know, I'll just wait till, you know, it's this will pass in November, November 3rd, it's all going to be over. How many Christians did you talk about, talk to conservatives, this will all be over November 3rd? Right, a bunch of people thought, well, okay, yeah. maybe this will just, just stop. This will stop. So, uh, you know, in, in, in the church that I was going to, and I won't mention the guy's name, uh, you know, he says that, oh, no, if it gets really bad, then he'll stand up. But he's complying with every order at this point. He's taking government money. Um, and, no, I'm sorry, he's just, it's going to get to the point where it's so bad he let it get so far that he's not going to be able to stand up at that point. Or they're just, everybody's going to get beheaded or put in a camp or something. So right. now's because, the time uh, that we need to... Like those clergy response right. teams. It's like, uh, okay, so it's, it's almost to, to that point where they say, well, we have to obey the government. Uh, they, they said that, you know, we have to go get our heads chopped off. <laughs> well, right. And, and what's happening is we're going to have less people on our side and there's going to be more people to stand up to later because they've hyped this so much that there's going to be so many people afraid that that when they come out with these vaccinations and it, they may not be forced at first it's just you won't be able to travel you may not be able to go to the grocery store uh, your employer may just say well hey you can't go to work anymore and this is all because we've let it go good people have not stood up and and they have not stood up when it was easier to do early on and the longer we let this go the harder it's going to be because there's going to be I, I'm just amazed every time I go out. Um, I'm the only non-masked person, or Emily is, except when we when we went to the restaurant. There was uh, the four of us, and then I noticed there was a group that came in that didn't have a mask on. And then when we left, there was another group that didn't have a mask on. And these were younger people, and I was actually um, I was sort of encouraged by that because I've noticed for the most part the younger people don't want to make waves and they'll just go along and, and wear masks. Yeah, because they're they're, uh, you know, like they're under a, 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 a trance from their uh, their monolith uh, cell phone, shoe phone. Well, even the ones that don't uh, that don't believe in this uh, will still wear the mask. But so it was good to see some younger people um, starting to wake up. But 
uh, and most, you know, most retail workers, I would think at this point, they, they sort of know because uh, we got some boy, I got boys in retail, and you know, when nobody's around, they take their mask off. Even in the medical places, I've seen that. And then all of a sudden, somebody will come in and they put their mask up. Uh, it's it's the power right. hungry people, but they know that nobody's dying there. Right, right. They know nobody's dying there, but the masses of people are just. I mean, I, I know some people are just so scared of this. Um, at, at the job, uh, we've got one guy going into the office to, uh, uh, they got l very limited staff going in there and he goes in there to do some paperwork and check the mail and things. And one of our colleagues says, well, hey, there's, you know, why don't you stay for a little Christmas get together? And he was like, oh no, can't do that. I don't want to be around people. You know, he's so scared that he goes into the office and he's only there. He'll only be there for an hour or two and get out because he's afraid that he might catch it. And uh, but there's you know there's millions and millions of people like that, and they're so scared that if they think that we're really a danger to them, you know, look how they're going to be led. You know, we're going to be considered dangerous. We need to be locked up. We're put, we're killing right. people. It's, it's like a repeat of uh, you know the, the Nazi takeover in Germany, and then uh, yeah. like you know we talked to. Dimitri Dudeman's grandson, Michael Boldea, and he was you know, describing how, how things were taken over in, in uh, Romania, where you know basically it was we're following the same you know, pattern where they, they say well you, you know, look look these uh, these Christians uh, they're intolerant uh, you know the next and you know this you know keeps on getting worse they'll go look the, these Christians are dangerous you know they want to be independent you know they they don't wear uh, they don't want to you know, follow the orders. So it's, it's, it's like we're following the same pattern. Okay, Bob's gonna look up. Uh, well, while you're looking that up, I'm gonna promote this book. Uh, uh, Emily started reading it. I haven't read it yet, but I, I listened to the guy on the Tom Woods show and I bought this because I figured it, it may be censored soon, but it's called Face Masks and One Lesson. And really this is uh, a way to uh, exercise your rights and get out of wearing face masks at your job, at uh, retail locations and uh, different locations. And he he explains on how to do that and gives a lot of examples in here. Um, so this is something you might want to check out. Like I said, I haven't read it yet, but I heard the guy in the Tom Woods show. Uh, this is Alan Stevo, uh, face masks on one lesson. And it, and it talks, it gives you some facts in here too about how the face masks are ineffective. Another book um, that I recommend that has been banned by Amazon, and a friend of mine from church is selling this, uh, but he's been getting these directly from the uh, author, and it's from James Perloff. It's COVID-19 and the agendas to come red-pilled. And this was banned by... Uh, by Amazon, so you know that it's probably something good in here, and it is a good book. I just I just finished it. A uh, lot of references in here, a lot of sources. I mean, it covers um, you know all the topics, and, and I'll, I'll go into this. Anything from um, the lockdowns are they effective? Uh, the methodology of panic, the theories about the nature of where this came from, uh, the deep state's end game and uh, just just everything in here it's it's good and it's all it's all referenced uh, in fact um, I know you want to talk about this but since I've got the book up now you know one of the things <clears throat> um, I would search on his website if if not uh, email man at the prophecy brothers and uh, or brother man or whatever you put in it's actually going to come through but um, Anyway, if you want to, I can give you the link of the, the friend of mine that's selling this on eBay. But uh, we're, we're trying to get this out to people of influence. I mean, this is limited supplies. This is money uh, out of our pocket. So I, I, I don't want to hand this to anybody that's just going to you know, we sit on more, information more and not do anything it. with it. Right. Right. So uh, now family members, you know, like I, I gave one to mom. She's going to read it. And, but then I want to get it in front of some people that are actually going to go out there and uh, do something with it. So I've got this too. Um, you know, one of the things that I was doing is I was calling uh, local council members and commissioners. I actually made several calls to them. And one, one of the council members, I forgot how many there are, but one was actually polite. He called me back. We had a long conversation. And uh, he voted for the mask mandates here. And he gave me his reasons. And uh, he's a Democrat. He seemed very sincere. But he seemed open-minded too. So we, we got talking and, and, and I started reminding him that this was all about two weeks to flatten the curve. Now it's no cases. And, 
and how things are going on and that they want to start requiring uh, vaccines. And I said, you know, Ticketmaster had uh, said that they might require that. And that was a hot button for him because he goes, well, I'd like to go to concerts. So I asked him, I said, if I got you this book, would you read it? Are you open-minded enough to read it? So, you know, I got it on the local council. Hopefully he'll read it. Um, we got it out to one of our state representatives too. Uh, he was on the Liberty show that I do. Uh, he was out at a protest back, back in August about the mass protesting what our governor is doing, one of the state reps. So we're getting some of this out. The other thing that I've done is I've taken some of these videos that uh, talk about this that are being banned from YouTube. In fact, the COVID cult uh, has been taken off of YouTube. But I've been putting things on the DVD and making them. Uh, I've made seven videos right now, and I've been handing them to people. So, and I carry, a, I carry business cards with me that have information on all this. So if somebody confronts me, and I said, you know, hey, why don't you check out if you really want some facts? So, and then a lot of futuristic people yeah. don't even have a DVD player. So, well, you know, that's, maybe we have to have some get some cheap uh, those uh, cartridge thumb cartridges somewhere. Well, you know that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Cheaper than the thing that I was thinking of. If you remember back when we were in uh, network marketing business, we listened to some of these old timers when they came out with cassette tapes. That's right. They said people didn't have cassette tapes. So, yeah, they bring the record so, player with them. Well, so they they actually invested in some cassette players, and then they would loan the cassette player with that, and they had those little portable DVD players. Now I'm not, you know, when I when I say all this, I'm not saying we, you know, you guys need to do this. But this is just something. This is some brainstorming to do something. You know, but, get get the information in people's hands. Well, yeah, that uh, you know, network yeah. marketing was you know basically, you know, that's a good model for church building because uh, I think right. that's where they got it, got it from anyway. Right. And then we're you know that's you know basically we're getting this information out. Uh, you know, at the same time, you know, we need to warn people that you know, you know not only you know they need to worry about this, but. Uh, you know, are they going to, are they saved? Are they going to go to heaven? But I mean, but yeah, I mean, this all goes together. Well, it's the same, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to wake some people up like at a nail salon up in Michigan. Um, Emily took one of the DVDs I made and the guy said, well, he didn't have a DVD player. And then our friend Mike, I gave one to him and then I asked him, uh, you know, what he thought. And he goes, well, he didn't have a DVD player at home. So he was listening to that work though. But, uh, but you know, getting, getting that DVD player and then going ahead and sitting down with somebody if they believe in all this stuff, they may not sit down and watch it with you. So I'm just throwing some things out. But basically, um, some of these videos out there that are on YouTube, I mean, we are so um, we're so used to just sharing videos now and everything being online that it can be shut off just like this. So I, 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 we're going to have to get back into the physical world. We're going to have to buy physical books. We're going to have to invest a little bit of our money in things. Uh, some DVDs, some players, do something to get some of that physical because um, all this electronic online stuff, cloud stuff, can be shut off just like this. And, and they're starting to do that. So right. anyway, my point is, is just figure out something, throw some mud on the wall, get in motion, see what works, what doesn't. Uh, but try to get in, in front of influencers. I mean, even the, you got some of the Bible tracks there, Champion? That's right. So, you know, we had the... Uh I mean, I've been doing this generation, right. but uh, I've been doing this too, getting out the Bible tracks. Um, so doing okay. something. So you could zoom in uh, on the video. You, you could see, okay, this is good, uh, you know, for the anti-communists. Good for the don't take the mark of the beast or the, uh, or whatever they want to inject. Chick into. Publications right now has a sale on on their tracks, a half price. You can get a thousand for eighty-five dollars. So if you go, and it's just I think for the month of December. So if you go there, we don't make any money off this, but I got, I got email from Chick Publications. You can go there if you feel like this is what you want to hand out instead of books. You want to, um, you know, um, convert people and evangelize and you know get some of these. Um, this does a little bit of both, doesn't it? So that's right. Uh, and, and the uh, poor revolutionists too. So all right, sorry. Go ahead, champion. Oh, I just said uh, you know one scripture here, Second Timothy. Um, Chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So all this fear stuff, okay, that, that doesn't come from God. That's, uh, you know, that, that's all part of that, you know, the, uh, the devil attack. I mean, in the, in the witchcraft, people know that they could, they could use fear 
be able to, to uh, you know, get people to uh, do their will, uh, you know, lock themselves up, kill themselves. <laughs> you know, lock, lock up the whole planet. It's all based on lies. The devil's a liar. All this fear stuff, uh, you know, comes from the enemy, comes from, from the devil, where, you know, God's given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind to come against this stuff. So all we got to do is stand against it in Jesus' name. And, uh, you know, if we get put down, well, we're going to be put down worse if we don't do anything. So Right. Yeah, now's the time. I mean, we can't let this... This is really the big one, and I'm not, I'm not calling for violence or anything. I'm just saying, you know, just disobey. Um, I want to I call it civil disobedience in a way, but We're, civil disobedience would assume that they actually have the authority to tell us to stay in our homes, to not go to church, and to wear masks and to put something in our body we're not supposed to. So I don't even know if this so is civil dis disobedience. Disobey the, the, the fake orders the that fake they, have no, they have no authority to, to, to do to right, us. Right, uh, it's right. all, you know, the devil you know, says, well, you know, come on, just, you lock yourself up. You, you, know, you like it. <laughs> right, right. And I, I know the election's important, um, and we want honest and fair elections, but I don't. I think this is really what we're talking about here. Is really what where, where the fight would be. Um, I mean, hey, it's great to share memes about unfair elections and all this stuff. And but um, we've been saying that for a while. It's like there's only so much we can we can do about that, you know. But you can, uh, and regardless, I mean, all of this has happened under Trump's watch. I'm not saying it's his fault, but if you think putting him in another four years is going to solve all this. It's not. Yeah, you know, you know if, if there was, you know, some type of, uh, you know, loyal, uh, you know, American, uh, you know, military sub brother where, you know, they could do something to lock up the, you know, the globalists. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, God, God's a, uh, you know, a miracle worker. I mean, he could, mm -hmm. he could do that. But you know, basically, this, this stuff's up to God. But he requires us to step out in faith. You know, right. be strong and of good courage, like you know, Joshua, like. You know, when they went into promised land, you know, God brought them out of Egypt. Mm. You know, so they got to the Red Sea and they're freaking out going, oh, you know, you brought us here, you'll get killed. Mm -hmm. Moses says, you know, stand back, see the salvation of the Lord. You know, so this whole thing, like we, we're, we've been in our Bible study going over the book of Hebrews. So, you know, that's like the main thing that, you know, God wants to focus on right now is, you know, live by, you know, the just shall live by their faith. Mm -hmm. And you know, and Jesus, um, you know, so you know, God's you know, give us instructions. You know, He's told us to be strong and have good courage. You know, don't don't be afraid of these you know these giants that look like they can't be conquered. They, you know, they're nothing compared to God. Right. He just wants us to stand up in faith, say, "Well, God, I, I we know that you could do it. Uh, we're just, we're going to plant plant some seeds of uh, you know, warning people, and you know, we we have to leave the rest up to." Up to the Holy God's Holy Spirit, you know, to, uh, to bring forth, uh, you know, people uh, bring forth the harvest, and then we're supposed to pray for, you know, God to send forth laborers to bring in the, you know, the harvest. So that, you know, that's us. That's who, whoever we're talking to. Mm. So, you know, basically, it was, you know, if it looks like we, we're not being effective, just you know, go do something and trust Jesus, give it over to Him, mm. pray before you go out, talk to people. So God, you know, show me the right people to talk to. You know, whether it's, uh, you, know, con you know, local, you know, government people or council people or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or if you're somebody that can, uh, you know, you know, that's already, uh, you know, in that position or whatever, but. Or church, yeah, I mean, um, you know, pastors and, and, and things like that, too. Those are people in position of influence that, uh, you know, maybe they have uh, the best intentions. They're just, uh, they've been misled, so. But going back to the hoax thing, you know, this is this is something, too, that I haven't seen anybody talk about. Um, but because I've got an insurance background, this this stuck out of my mind. I uh, saw Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company had made an announcement a few weeks back that they had record. They were going to be paying out record dividend payments of six point two billion dollars. They've never paid this out. Now, Northwestern Mutual is a is a company, a mutual life insurance company is owned by the policyholders. And I'll try to keep this. If you're not familiar with this, I'll just tell you how it works. So basically, they collect premiums 
and they have actuaries and they think about how many people are going to die and and they try to underwrite everybody and take on good risks and and really the insurance is only supposed to you know pay if somebody unexpected death and if you take you know they're expecting more people are going to live and pay than than die and that they have to pay out basically and so if they are able to keep their costs down for the year and they don't have a lot of death claims and other costs they can refund that premium some of the premium they collected but they don't have stockholders so they refund that to the policyholders and those are called dividends so what a responsible company would do if they thought that there was going to be a lot of deaths coming up next year because of all this and they had a lot of deaths this year they wouldn't be paying that out well one they if they had a lot of death claims and this is my interpretation of all this is if they had a lot of death claims they wouldn't have record dividends to pay out and if they thought they were even if they didn't have a lot of death claims this year they would they would be holding on to that money in anticipation of having to pay it out next year so I would think if there's as many deaths as they are, we would be hearing what, what happens when a, when a company or a bank starts getting stressed. They want bailouts, right? That's right. what we've come to expect the last uh, 12 years since 2008. I don't think there's been any life insurance companies asking for bailouts because they've been having to pay out a whole bunch of death claims. Right. So, and then the other thing, um, I haven't, uh, I, I hear people starting to talk about, I haven't heard anybody talk about the life insurance aspect. Uh, the obituaries, I've checked the obituaries here locally almost every day probably for the last 10 years. Um, just did it for work and, and then um, also, um, you know, as you get older, you kind of start seeing people that you know and you're thinking, well, that's weird. Um, but at least online, I have not seen the pages growing. So here locally, um, you know, they, they said the local hospital here was having to bring in refrigeration trucks because the morgues were overflowing. And I'm like, so I, on the news website, I, I posted, uh, well, why aren't we seeing the obituary pages growing? And so then all the people that believe in all this were jumping all over me and, and uh, they're like, well, you have to pay for the obituaries. It's $200 and that's expensive. People don't want to do it. But I would still think that there'd still be the page growing. Yeah, there's think that, yeah, the percentage of, mm -hmm. you know, it'd still go up. So, so let's say these, these places are telling us, you know, they, they really, the morgues are overflowing. Let's say that's truthful, right? And so who are these people, where are these dead bodies coming from, if this is true? Because these are people without the life insurance policies. I'm not saying everybody have life insurance policies, but you would, you would think you'd see a spike in that. The obituary pages are growing, so these are people that don't have families that pay $200. So, and, and you know, at this point, they were telling me here in our county that the death rate was going up. There was eight to ten more people dying a day because of this. You, you know how social media is. I mean, if you've ever been on social media yeah. and you start seeing people that are connected, you're like, I didn't know this person knew this person or this person was connected through this person. We'd be hearing about it. At this, this, point. this isn't like the right. you know the fake videos that they had at the beginning of the year with you know in China where people are falling over and twitching like. Uh, Right. You know, Apollo Creed. <laughs> so we would, my point of all this is, at least locally here, we would we would know somebody who knew somebody. And we'd be hearing it if there was that well, many people every then, day. We'd be hearing a lot of it. We, I mean, we, we would be one or two people away from somebody that's dying, and we'd be hearing that every week. And then we're, we're talking, know uh, you know, kind of like, or, you know, maybe the you know, people that, uh, you know, you know we're, the people like, we're thinking like, we, you know, we would think like we people that want to know what the truth is, but then you got the uh, you know the, the secret devil worshiping groups that get into the, the positions of power. Like, well, I, I believe I know you know some of these these people that uh, they're in these you know these groups, you know secret groups, and then you can tell when they're talking that they don't believe what they're saying, but then they'll they'll say, well, well, yeah, I know, I know this or this. You know, there, there's a lot of these morgues filling up. Uh, you know, I know this this or this or this person, but you can tell they're you know, they're in a position of influence, but they're, you, you know, you just feel in the spirit that they're, they're, they're lying to you because they're part of, uh, you know, they, they want to set up a global government. They want to, you know, have an antichrist uh, government mm -hmm. because that's their religion. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of that going on where people, you know, it's, you know, kind of like we, you know, we forgot about it, <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, 
those people are in, are in positions of power. You know, that's what we're seeing going on. Yeah, yeah, and this is a, this is a power grab. The people in positions of power, there's enough of them that are going on that 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 are steering the ship, and the rest of the people. Most are people just are just along, you know, they're dumb, just, or they just uh, they they, they want to they, they be on the side that who, who, you know whoever's in power they want to. You don't want to you know, cause problems or... Right. And so many people at this time of year, I was talking to a guy the other day, and I brought up the election, and he goes, I, I just want to focus on Christmas. Well, okay, well, sometimes, you know, Jesus, you know, had to go apart from the people, but, you know, hmm. just, you know, just, you can't shut off, uh, you know, your brain... Right. From everything. No, I mean, yeah, you got to have breaks. And I don't mean Christmas as far as the birth of Christ. It was the Christmas season and the, you know, of that aspect of it. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going, uh, I'm not going senile here, but I, I did remember what I wanted to say. And this goes back to the election and what we're talking about when you, um, when, when, with the prophecies and, and things happening here to, to the U.S. And, you know, one of the things we hear a lot about, you know, we're under judgment from God. And I hear a lot of people give reasons why, you know, the things that we've done in this country, which are all valid. Um, but, you know, Sydney Paul brought up something, too, um, when she was she's talking about the Dominion software and our alphabet agencies use this. And, you know, this all could be with the election. This could be another judgment because how many times have we done this to other countries? I mean, a lot. Cause she, she, and, I, and I would think she's, her, her life's in danger because she, she has said our alphabet agencies have used these right. in other yes. countries. And Some so, people you know, say, yeah we, yeah, we should use that to put down other countries. But, you know, I mean, so, basically we shouldn't yeah. be involved with other countries. We, we shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. Um, and so that may be coming, you know, that might be right. another reap what you sow. Reap what we sow. God, God won't be mocked. Right, because there's a lot of people, you know, on the right that, you know, cheered all this when we did this in other countries. Um, you know, and now it's coming back to bite us. So do we, let's say we do find that there's some kind of China tie behind this, or do we, or Venezuelan or something, other than just the parts coming through there or something, just, you know, the data flowing through there. Do we then go to war over that? I mean, um, and if you think about this, if we've done this to other countries, you know, they don't have, some of these other countries don't have the ability to fight us in a conventional war, so they've had to resort to terrorism, which right. I'm not condoning that, but, you know, you have to think about, you know, why some of this, why, why some of this stuff has happened to the United States. Um, you have to kind of listen to, to their reasons. Well, because you've been meddling in our, our affairs. Um, I know it's going to tick a lot of people off, but that's, but you know, that's then again, the that, that's still that's still being uh, manipulated by the uh, well, the devil's at the top of the uh, devil pyramid. But, right, uh, right. Uh, you know, the, we know that, that there's going to be a world government, you know, that, that's going to be run by the Antichrist and false prophet. So that, you know, they, they've been using this stuff over and over just to, you know, get people to fight against each other. And then they'll take over after they destroy each other. So now we're seeing it here. Right, right. So, um, he, like we talked in the last time you and I did a show together, is repent. One of the things we need to repent of um, what we've done personally. And, and I'm not preaching to anybody. I'm just talking. You know, I'm talking well, to myself. You can do it because uh, if, if we're saved, then we can preach. So okay. it, it's all right. Well, but, you know, um, I'm always, you know, if you're pointing, you got a few fingers pointing back at you. So. That, that's right, but uh, okay. Well, you know, the Bible says uh, you know everybody's sin, nobody's good, no, only God's good. Uh, you know, the, the most righteous people, then you know, even the you know, the, their righteousness is filthy rags to God. So, you know, basically, we we have to take up our cross, stop doing things our way, do do things God's way. So it's like, okay, whatever you know that God wants you to do, when you're doing that, then you're in in the body of Christ. You know, if it lines up with God's word. But well, then, you know, then you're not actively going against God. You're doing what he wants you to do. And then, okay, then, you know, you're not, you know, not going the wrong direction. So, 
Okay, it may, maybe made that that's too right. complicated. Okay. But. <laughs> well, that's what we do here. We make things, we make things complicated. Um, I'm just trying to see from my notes here. Uh, really, I mean, it's just, it, it's it's not time to sit on the sidelines. Uh, I, you know, it's maybe the point here of this show is we, we need to do something, and if we could all do something, um, you know, whatever it is, that, you know, we all have different talents. We all have different things in our, our lives. Uh, we may not be able to do the same as other people like the, um, you know, the people that go out and they can travel all over the country and, and protest and, and you know, be at different events. Um, you know, not all of us can do that or not all of us can go undercover somewhere with a camera, but uh, we can do what we can do. And, and you know, maybe a start of that is just... Um, you know, hand something like this out to somebody, um, say no to the mass. Uh, and, okay, so I guess I want to end with uh, Luke chapter 9. Talk about take up our cross. Uh, you know, well, okay, I'll start with uh, Luke chapter 9, verse... Uh, 23. Well, no, I'll start with 22. No, I lied. 21. Okay, and he uh, straightly charged them, commanded them uh, to tell no, uh, no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of, of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain, be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is it advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, and he shall come in his own glory and his fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you uh, tell you of, of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not s taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. So, okay, you know, Jesus is saying, well, if, you know, if we, we want to follow Jesus, well, we have to deny ourselves, you know, or, or born again, then our, our old man, our old sinful ways you know, are dead. Our, our spirit is a control. You know, we we we're following you know God's Holy Spirit. We we put God's Holy Spirit in charge of our life by obeying what God wants us to do. You know that's taking up our cross daily. You know so just you know getting going going along with uh, the, you know the system. You know when you know you know you're going along with a, a lie. You know these all these lies that are going on, just to try to save yourself. Well then. Okay, we'll end up like like they ended up in Nazi Germany or 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 Russia or you know all these in China where all these communist takeovers happen because everybody just you know lie down and you know decide to go along with all this uh, you know basically it's you know you know high powered uh, like you know witchcraft uh, you know spell all these lies going on you know it's a lie well don't don't agree with it. You know, this, we have to fight back in the spirit. Say, well, I'm not going to come into agreement with the lie. I'm, I'm not going to be ashamed of Jesus. You know, we, we still have uh, freedoms here. Uh, you know, the, uh, the the people that you know fought for you know in the revolution, you know, the revolution for the you know the freedom. Well, they they didn't lay down. You know, they 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 died for freedom. So uh, other people have done that in different areas. So you know, it looks like it's our turn. But yeah. again, there's some some instances where you know Jesus would say, "Well, okay, don't do anything, just pray, right. or just tell people, warn people." Right. So maybe we're, we're right now we're we're just at the stage of warning people and praying. Mm. Right, right, and yeah, and the sooner we do that, the um, you know, and I'm hoping it's not too late, but uh, we need to warn people. We need to. Um, you just not comply with these these illegal illegal orders because if we later again, I mean, if we're doing it now for the little stuff like the mask, it's going to be and, too late when the big stuff comes. It's out. like uh, well, and Lindsey Williams, uh, we talked about him before that 
uh, oil pipeline chaplain who was in a prophecy club. Uh, the people he was talking to, they, they said this whole thing, you know, basically this year was to, you know, to see what they could get, get the church to do with it, see if they get the churches shut down. Because they, you know, they, they knew that if they could do that, then, you know, basically, you know, you know God's people were giving up their, their, you know, sovereignty, you know, over to the enemy. And they could right. do whatever they want after that. Right. So I knew that when, you know, this uh, shutdown, this HOAC stuff started, I, I, knew, I knew that there was no reason for, for this at all anyway. If, there, if their people were, you know, were sick, the people that, stick, that were sick just need to stay at home, not everybody else. I mean, everything was a lie. So, I mean, well, you know, all that happened, and you know, we, nothing we do about it now. We just have to, you know, stop going along with it. We just have to stop going along with it. And um, I, I know we're supposed to end up here, but uh, you know, when when I when I called all those uh, council people and the commissioners, um, it didn't have any effect. I mean, in fact, uh, one of the commissioners I called, I've I've known since high school, and. I just, it's, it's amazing how much of the New World Order stuff that he's just going along with, and, uh, and supposedly he's supposed to be a conservative, but uh, I won't get into all of that. But just before I, I came here tonight, I was watching a rerun of uh, Mike Spaulding does a uh, Facebook show live every week, and he was talking about some of the things that uh, the Christians need to be doing and need to be doing, and he's, he, he talked a little bit about, you know, hey, you're wasting time, you know, just trying to focus on the politicians and calling them even. And, uh, you know, yeah, maybe, uh, but, you know, it didn't take a whole bunch of time. I called them. I did get a hold of one person. You know, I went through how many of them to get one person to take this book and to look at some things. Um, you got to at least know that, that they're there. So, uh, you know, whether it's calling politicians, we just have to do something and keep in motion and, and uh, just have faith. Um, that the, that the effort's going to be rewarded. Well, but, uh, I mean, there's all kinds of examples in the Bible where uh, you know people prayed, you know, and God would you know give an answer. Say, well, okay, you don't have to do any fighting here. Just you know praise Him that our warfare is it's not carnal; it's spiritual. We see you know God you know change things around where you know the enemies are are surprised. You know we're surprised other than you know God told us. Uh, you know, it gives it gives us the, you know the victory. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll hear that while we're praying, and then we have to you know walk by faith, not by sight. If we just you know just keep on walking by what we're seeing or hearing instead of what what God tell, told us, then you know then we're not you know we're not praying it through. And then God said, well, you know, I, I can't honor that now because you you don't have faith. You know, Jesus said, well, you find faith when He comes back. So. Okay, that's that's my message. You know, right now this you know book of Hebrews, uh, what I just read, uh, you Luke. know Luke chapter nine. Take up your cross daily. Don't deny Jesus, uh, or you know Jesus will, you know God will, Jesus will deny us. Uh, and okay, this you know, this basically the you know the book of Hebrews is about faith. That's uh, that's what we're, we need to focus on. I believe at this season is you know God gave us promises. We, we need to know that he answers prayers. He's a good God. He's a good, complete control. Only the things he, that, that, everything that happens are, are the things that God allows to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to do our part. You know, believe, believe that he can do it. He can bring us through things. He can, he can hold back the evil for, you know, season. Stuff doesn't have to come to an end right now. You know, eventually we know what's going to happen. You know, everything in the Bible is, is going to happen. But you know, it doesn't mean that we can't pray. You know, God, please hold this off. You know, He could do it. So, Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching tonight. And uh, there again, if you want uh, this book, look for James Perloff. Has a lot of good information in there uh, about uh, just everything, everything you can think of that's gone on with this. So, if you need some ammunition even just to to say some things to people some of the facts that's going to be in here you might want to read this and hand this to a person of influence uh and then face masks on one lesson like i said i haven't read this yet i heard the guy uh but uh i i hurry up and ordered it just because i thought it might get taken down
Amen. And then, okay, one more thing that you know, they noticed that this whole year, that, you know, powerful things have been happening during the uh, uh, biblical feast days. So you know, if this gets on before the, uh, the feast of the dedication or, the, uh, or Hanukkah or the feast of lights, you know, it's like the rededication of the temple site so starts sundown December 10th and goes to uh, December 18th. So we're filming this uh, December 8th. That's a Tuesday. So, so basically, you'll know, watch and pray for what happens. Uh, you know, that we're that we're prepared for you know whatever happens. It, and like I was saying, you know, God answers prayers. So if there's enough of us, you know, pra praising God that you know and, and repenting and doing everything that we, we know we're supposed to be doing, that uh, you know God answers prayers. So, okay, that's Amen. it. All right. Okay. Pull the show fire. Here we go. See you next time on the Prophecy Brothers. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel.